the one we saw a little bit ago, the second version will do it in about three minutes. Where we're expecting this one to do it in about one minute. At this station, he's gonna install the bearings to the block and to the main cap. Uh, he'll prelude that, and then he will install the crankshaft in there. What it will do is torque the, all of the cylinder head bolts on both banks, repeat that perfectly every time. So Bill, tell us a little bit about how you guys are different and how we would build an engine at home. So if me and you were gonna build an engine, you know, we're putting the, the rods on the pistons, we're putting rings on, we're putting the bearings in. You guys do it a little bit differently here. Yeah, so we're an engine factory, so we're mass producing engines day in, day out. So we can't do it the same way that you might do it at home. So one of the things that we're working towards as part of continuous improvement with a manufacturing facility is kitting or sub-assembling some of those smaller assemblies that you wouldn't want to do in the assembly line, it would slow it down. So we talked about uh, piston rods and, and the pistons and the rings, those come out balanced and assembled, they stage them with the crankshaft line side. So if me and you were gonna build an engine at home, you know, it, it's a lot different. You, we put the pistons and rods together, we put rings on them, put bearings in it, and, and that takes a lot of time. Tell us how you guys do it differently here at Blueprint. Yeah, so we have a small assembly area that will do that away from the main assembly line. They'll put those together, they'll balance them, they'll match them with a the crank, and then that'll be staged line side with the assembly line, and it just takes, takes that work out of the assembly worker's time and speeds up the process. Um, it, it could be things as simple as just taking the pistons themselves out of a box, or distributors or carburetors, removing those from the box, and putting them on the cart staged and ready to go on the engine. Again, it's just taking that time away from the operator. Yeah, and tell us about the carts that you have these on. Now, these kind of look like giant erector sets, and you guys put these together, and they're modular, so you can change them around and do some different stuff. Elaborate on that a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, so there's several different companies that offer these modular systems. Basically, you buy the tubes and the, and the fasteners, and you can configure them and assemble them however you want. Um, you can change them, say you want to take them apart and reuse them. Um, it, it just really makes it easy for us to make it suit whatever parts or the work area. Maybe we have a cell that's too small for a larger cart and we need to make it fit that work area, we're able to do that. Being able to customize something like that and make it fit your area is really important. So let's move on from all these beautiful pistons and rods and go check something else out. All right, very good. So we're back with Kel, and you guys offer all sorts of different engine packages and configurations that you can get a Blueprint engine in. So tell us a little bit about that and what we have going on here. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys have been taking a look at the whole assembly process. So now we're at the point of it being a complete long block minus the valve covers. So what we're gonna do in this step is we're gonna add the intake. We're also gonna add the harmonic balancer. So you can get it carbureted, you can get it fuel injected. Some are gonna come with spark plugs, spark plug wires, water pump, even to the point of the complete front drive if you want it fully dressed with air conditioning, power steering, and the alternator. Yeah, so if I want, I can basically get plug and play, drop in my car, take a lot of the guesswork out of it for me. Yeah, if you have parts that you can reuse from your existing engine, you can just get a long block and reuse your fuel system, your front drive assembly. Or if you're wanting to replace everything, or say you're going from a V6 to a V8 and you're wanting all new, we can help you. Different levels of horsepower, different levels of dress. He's about to put a balancer on, and there's a really cool process that you guys use for that. Let's check that out. You're gonna show us how the balancer goes on. Obviously, you're gonna line it up with the key first. We've put some lube on, we've put some three bond on to make sure there's no leak and uh, go ahead and show us how this is installed. Now we've all seen people where they get that big hammer and they just beat that on. That's not the right way to do that. Here we're actually gonna be using a pneumatic ram. Some thread lock going on there. and the washer and bolts. Also, one of the things we've seen around the facility that I really appreciate is all the one-off custom tools to make these processes better. So correct, this is going to, you know, fits perfectly in the uh, holes that are already in the balancer. That way you can secure the balancer, secure the crank, and, and make sure that that's torqued properly. All right, Justin, so we showed you how we install the intake. We show you how we bolt on the balancer. Now let's move on down the assembly line. We'll get some valve covers on this, carburetor, distributor, and uh, I'm not sure, let, so this one, yep, it's a CTC, so that will be the 
the level that this one will be completed to. So we still got to add valve covers, carburetor, distributor, and then we're going to run and test it on the dyno. Man, I can't wait to see this thing all pretty. Let's do it. All right. Now, Kel, we're in the final assembly area where you guys bolt on all the bells, whistles, and blinks. So can you tell us about this cool engine sitting behind us? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a prime example of one of our small block 350s. Obviously in the small blocks, we do the 350, 383, 396, 400, 427, and even a 454 small block. They're all gonna look real similar to this. And then like we talked about earlier, we have the different levels of dress. Everything from just a long block, so no intake, carburetor, or distributor, all the way up to this version, which is a deluxe dress. So it's gonna have the intake, carburetor, distributor, spark plug, spark plug wires, water pump and harmonic balancer, plus the fuel pump and fuel line to the carburetor. And it gets all ran and tested with the parts you see here on the dyno. So yes, you will be able to install it. Obviously it will come with the correct pre-installation instructions. We'll talk to you how to prime it and so forth. You wanna make sure that the oil pump's primed and, and so forth before you're hitting it with ignition. But it will have a whole packet explaining that. It's also gonna come with the warranty paperwork and what everyone loves, it, it's gonna come with the dyno sheet for your exact engine. They are all individually serial numbered, so you'll have the results for your exact engine. We're heading over the dyno cell now, correct? To see these things actually get tested? Absolutely, we're gonna show you next is the dyno testing process. Everyone loves to see their horsepower numbers, but the great thing about it is it's actually the last step in quality control. We're gonna show you all the different things that we're gonna test in that process. Uh, I'm super excited because the proof is in the pudding. If you hear it run, you, you know it's going to be good. Absolutely. Let's go. Kel, we're at the second to last step before these things head out the door. And Evan here is setting this thing up, getting ready for a dyno. Now, just standing in here, it's a little bit chilly. I think I need a long sleeve shirt. So we're pumping in air from outside and exhausting it so that it's real life applications. Fresh air constantly being pumped in and any exhaust fumes getting sucked out. So what Evan's doing right now is he's hooking up the harness for us. We're in currently in one of our four production dynos. Evan's just finishing connecting the wiring harness up right now. When you get an engine from Blueprint engines such as this LS supercharged 427, it's gonna come with the correct tune for you. We're gonna send it with the full wiring harness the ECU, the fuse panel, even the drive-by wire acceleration pedal. That's all gonna have the correct tune ready to go for you. And so before Evan fires this up, he's actually gonna flash that ECU with the correct tune. We're gonna leave that unlocked for you so you can still take it to a chassis dyno and they can do any fine tuning for you. Now, things do happen and mechanical parts do break and fail. And Evan's kind of the last line of defense here before this thing heads out the door. So say you had, you know, you're measuring all your exa exhaust gas temperatures here and you had maybe a cold cylinder or it didn't run quite right. Or do you guys diagnose these in the cell and try to fix it? Like you see here, these probes, they're gonna be measuring each exhaust manifold or exhaust header tube individually. So we're gonna capture individual cylinder exhaust gas temperature. Obviously, if there's a cold one, that's gonna alert Evan, hey, what's going on with cylinder seven or what's going on with that specific cylinder? For example, every now and then you might have a failed fuel injector, all right? Well, that's an easy diagnosis. That's something that he can quickly replace, test again. If everything checks out, we're good to go. With it being a production facility, it's normally something that he can repair within 30 minutes or the dyno operator can repair within 30 minutes. If it's outside of that, we're gonna pull the engine out of the facility and we actually have a rework department with very experienced technicians that are gonna do a deep dive, figure out exactly what, what that issue is. And then like always, that engine will also get brought back and ran and tested. So I believe Evan has everything hooked up. We're now gonna get out of the dyno cell. Every single engine is ran and tested inside a cell. If there ever is catastrophic failure, it's all contained to make sure no one is hurt. Well, let's step out and get the show to begin. Excellent.
All right, Justin, I bet you're wondering what we're doing here with the lights off. Yeah, I don't really understand why, why you'd want a dark dyno cell. All right, so after every engine is ran and tested, as you can see, Evan then is gonna kill the lights in the dyno cell, and he's gonna search the whole engine with a UV light. We put a dye in the oil that if there is any oil leaks, it's just gonna scream at him with the lights off in that UV light. So now that we check for an oil leak, we got the lights back on. Now Evan's gonna be checking for any possible blow by. He's gonna be checking crankcase pressure. Once again, I like to remind everyone, we don't just dyno test it for the horsepower, we're dyno testing it to make sure that it's 100% when you receive it. We all know how inconvenient it would be to install that engine on your brand new painted hot rod and then get it fired up and realize you gotta pull it and bring it back to us. So we're gonna do everything possible to make sure that that doesn't happen. All right, Justin, we finally made it. We are finally at packaging the last step in crating up that blueprint engine. So what Ken's doing here is he's gonna hoist it up. We're gonna take the engine stand off of it that it's been on for the whole time. Um, you're gonna see some tags on the engine also. These are all reminders or warnings. For example, this one right here, that's a reminder that this is an aluminum block. So in, once we identify some installation issues, we, we're gonna put out literature to help customers. We've had several customers use the block to you know, really suck in that transmission. Well, aluminum blocks don't like that. It's a good way to snap an ear off. So we'll have certain reminders. We're gonna remind you that there's no oil in the engine. You need to add the oil. It's gonna tell you the right capacity. It's gonna have all the customer service information. If you have any questions, once again, there's a reminder to give us a call and a few other crucial reminders. So now Ken's gonna completely seal the engine in this commercial bag. Sometimes you wonder, hey, that looks pretty basic, but that's also another thing to keep the cost down. That's a very effective way to make sure there's no moisture or no dust that gets into the engine during shipping. So as you can see here, Justin, after we put the engine in the bag, completely seal it and set it in the cradle, then we're gonna attach the tie down straps. Now those are metal straps that are bolted to the engine to make sure that it's fully secured when shipped. From there, you're gonna see him add the lid and add the additional paperwork. Like, like we already went over, every engine is gonna ship with the dyno sheet, the serial number, the warranty packet, and the installation guide. So if you were to ever have an issue, you can always call us direct. We track all the serial numbers, so we have every build sheet on file. We also have the dyno results on file. So if you were to ever lose your dyno sheet, you can always call us direct. We do have a customer service team that would love to help you, and they can look up that exact dyno sheet for your engine, and they can even email it to you or physically mail it to you in the mail if you'd like.